What happens when an unlikable, annoying nerd named Melvin gets tossed into a vat of toxic waste outside a health club? The waste transforms his body and mind and turns Melvin into a vicious monster who is compelled to attack evildoers that threaten the good people of Tromaville. Now Melvin is a fearsome vigilante with a heart of gold, the one and only Toxic Avenger. I'm Connor Izagari. I'm Austin Johnson. And this is Filmgasm. Happy Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is the 98th episode of the Filmgasm podcast, where Austin and I explore the legacy of genre films, mostly horror, and determine whether or not the films we discuss are worth remembering. Joining us today is Filmgasm writer Josh Allred, our resident trauma film expert who chose The Toxic Avenger as his personal pick for this cycle. Thank you for being with us today. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So since there's no rewind this week, let's jump right in. Josh, why did you choose the Toxic Avenger as your personal pick? So I think this was one of those movies that I needed to talk about to kind of like put my stamp on, you know, filmgasm and to kind of mix things up a little bit. Um, A lot of the stuff that we watched, you know, most horror fans will run across it. Trauma, however, is one of those things where you mention it, and if somebody goes, no, I've never seen it, you're like, oh, you're in for a treat. And really, like, as, as I'll go into, like, these movies are made for people who love watching movies. And I'll, I'll give my reasons, and you can agree or disagree, that's fine, but I, I firmly believe that that is definitely the case. Awesome. Yeah, well said. These are definitely films that are an acquired taste that are not going to be for everybody, but the people who do find these are the people who are looking for them or the people who are going to appreciate them. I definitely got that vibe watching The Toxic Avenger. Oh, yeah. Uh, The Toxic Avenger was produced by Troma Entertainment, an independent production company specializing in low-budget horror and comedy movies. The Toxic Avenger was their first big mainstream hit, Josh, why don't you tell us a bit about Troma and what they brought to the horror scene? Uh, well, initially, that wasn't even what they were going to do. Um, Lloyd Kaufman and Michael Herz, who started Troma, they got their, got their feet off the ground with what they call, quote-unquote, sexy comedies. And that was movies like Squeeze Play, The First Turn On, uh, Waitress. Essentially, what they did was later picked up by the majors and you had movies like Corky's and things like that. And he, the, the more you watch Troma and the more you come to hear Lloyd Kaufman talk, Troma was doing things before Hollywood was. And Hollywood was, you know, kind of seeing how they could make a lot of money off of what their ideas were and kind of package it in a way that was a lot more appealing to a wider audience. Whereas Troma is specifically designed for a very specific group of people and they don't hold back, which is one of the things I love. Um, Lloyd always talks about the budgets for his movies and how everything goes into what you see on screen. I mean, he's told stories about people shitting in paper bags and eating cheese sandwiches all in the name of making, making art and everybody is on board with that from the top on down. Lloyd doesn't hold himself any higher in that. And I really, really admire him for believing so much in what he does and willing to go through the same thing so that, you know, people follow him. And I was, I was, I'm not kidding you. I was very close one time to just hacking up my shit and driving up to New York just so I could work on a trauma movie. So close to doing it. Awesome. What, what, what stopped you? What's, if, you don't mind, if you don't mind me asking. Um, I was still in college at the time. And, okay. you know, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see myself just dropping it and yeah. going up there. Um, I mean, I knew I was going to go into a situation where I wasn't going to be making any money if I made anything. Of course, yeah. It was, all, it was all for doing that. And I, I still feel that way a lot about you know, like if I were to ever get my chance at making, making something, it would, it would be in that kind of spirit, like, you know, 
totally immersing yourself in it and giving your all to what is going to be on screen yeah. and finding people that are very, very dedicated to this and willing to do anything to make that happen. Um, yeah. I mean, I can, I can talk all day about trauma and Lloyd Kaufman and the thing that got toxic Avenger started was uh, Lloyd and Michael saw an article that said horror movies are dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, in, and in true trauma fashion, Hollywood sees that article. They're like, all right, well, we're not making horror movies. That trauma's like, no, that's exactly what we're going to do. And something that is inherent in trauma's design, not necessarily for the movies they acquire, because those are, it's, it's two different things. Um, the movies they make, the movies Lloyd makes, he's always trying to, um, talk about something toxic avenger was his chance to make his own uh super super human being movie um because he was going to get his ass sued if he had superhero in there um <laughs> and uh talk about the environment which was something that nobody was really doing yeah. and that's something I'll, I'll bring up about the toxic avenger um as we get going about this like just how big this became for trauma and how, you know, one of my first trips to New York, I had to go to the trauma building and I got such a nerd boner when I saw the trauma building and this giant fucking building size painting of Toxie on there. It was like, I had reached my neck up. I was so happy. Wow. That's awesome. Oh my God. <laughs> that is really cool. Um, the toxic Avenger was directed by Michael Hertz and Lloyd Kaufman, the founders of Troma. They would direct two sequels to the Toxic Avenger, and Kaufman would direct a good chunk of Troma's other releases and the fourth Toxic Avenger movie later. Um, before we get started, have you seen? You've, I assume you've seen all the sequels. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. How do they hold up? Mm. Well, okay, so it's it's kind of like they they are kind of timeless in a way, but you can kind of see with like the ones that they make um, after this, that there is kind of like an aesthetic that's applied to it. But the second one is in Japan, straight up taken place in Japan. Lloyd Kaufman had a largely Japanese crew and they made a Toxic Avenger movie in Japan. It is bananas, like <laughs> totally off the wall. Like Melvin's trying to find his dad and there's like drug smuggling involved. In Japan, wow. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, it's crazy. Um, and then as they get along, you kind of see that like these, these movies are like, you know exactly what you're going to get. There's never a question of like the content quality, whatever. Like I'm, I know I'm, I'm not going to a trauma movie for slick production value. Like I'm going to see how the hell they're going to blow somebody's head up this time. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the things Lloyd bragged about with toxic Avenger. It's like, it's one of the only movies where you have a kid's head get crushed and just totally brags about how they did it. And not only that talks about how he pulled that effect off for less than a dollar. And you're just like, how, how can you not admire somebody who is like, who knows he doesn't have the money, finds people that are creative and willing to work yeah. with him and achieve this goal, and then pull off some of the most gross, the like in your face things. And that's not even like where it stops. Like every trauma movie from Toxic Avenger on just increases in insanity and the special effects that are in there. Um, another one that I really want you guys to watch and you're going to think I'm like, I hate you or something. I don't you <laughs> <laughs> um, it's called terror fervor. And it is essentially like Lloyd Kaufman making, making fun of himself and a trauma production oh, all, the while, all the while with a uh, movie within a movie um, vibe and a serial killer. And that's all I'm going to say. That's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> You just have to see it to believe it. And even then you're still going to be like, how the fuck did they make this movie? <laughs> but it's just, it's, it's part of what makes trauma wonderful. I love what Austin said. He's like, yeah, it's one of a kind. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously, obviously toxic Avenger is my first go. 
uh, with trauma and Connors as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you know, I, I, I love that you said that it's, you know, for, it's for people who love movies. Um, it, I didn't particular particular in particular connect with the story or uh, like you said, the production, that's not what it's trying to do. Uh, what, what it's trying to do is lead you on for the next scene. And that's entertaining. That's what movies are for. So yeah, I, I totally agree with you there. Um, I definitely was like, when I was watching it, I was like, I, I don't understand personally the, 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 the love for it, but that's also coming from someone who's 25 and not as well versed in horror. So this is, there's a lot of things at, at, at play here. And Connor, I think yeah. you're kind of somewhere in between. I am. I'm, yeah, I'm in the middle here. Uh, but first, I just want to take an opportunity to acknowledge how fucking weird is the horror genre that we can, <laughs> we have this spectrum yeah. of like horrifying, goofy, and then everything in between to enjoy. How insane is that? Yes. That we are literally talking about how exciting it is to watch a kid's head explode <laughs> in a movie about an, like an ass-kicking mutant. Yeah. I mean, who would have thought? <laughs> It just blows my mind that this is what this is what we do. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's amazing. Amazing how people pass their time. <laughs> yeah, incredible. But I definitely saw this film as I, I went in, I'm not going to lie, I went in fully expecting to hate this. I was like, I don't want to do this episode. This is going to suck. And then I'm like, <laughs> I got into it. I'm like, all right. Yeah, I, I get it. Like, this is it's weird, but I'm, in, I'm, I'm involved. I'm, I'm paying attention. Yeah, there is never a dull moment. Like, yeah. and that, and that's something by design. Like, yeah, like with Roger Corman and his whole film and his whole formula for showing tits every so often. Like, Lloyd Kaufman just yeah, yeah. goes and takes it and runs with it in the other direction. He's like, no, it's just going to be something bananas. That's why if you look at every shot in that movie or in every trauma movie after that, the frame is just packed with shit going on yes. at all levels, foreground, middle, back. Like there's just shit going mm -hmm. on everywhere. Um, it's something I pointed out in this huge article slash filleting I did of Lloyd Kaufman and trauma where like they talk about, um, <laughs> you know, a character throws something off screen and you hear a fucking trash can and a cat scream or yeah. how every time somebody bends over, there's a fart. Like it's just, that's just part it's of act. Yeah. It's just, everything is packed. It's so layered and it's so just, it's just such an assault. It's just like overwhelming, but it's supposed to like, that's the yes. whole thing. It's like, you're, you're not going to be bored. And the, I think the first time I watched it with my wife, Jamie, um, she kind of looked at me like, what did you make me watch? And I'm sitting here laughing. I'm just enjoying every minute of it. And I'm laughing at all the things going on. She's like, you're disgusting. Like, I can't believe you love this stuff. And what can I say? You know, I, I have no shame. I love it. It's, it's, it's some of the most fun I've ever had watching a movie. And it's definitely something you have to watch, like, with people. And especially people who that's not their cup of tea, like it okay. immediately like sets the tone. You're just like, what? Oh my God. I've had people watch these movies with me and they've, that's like, this is so not even their, their realm. And they sat through the whole thing and they're just like, I don't, I don't like this movie, but I could not stop watching it. Yes. This is, yes. This is some fucked up shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's, that, that's a great way of putting it. It's like in um uh you know in American Hustle when Jennifer Lawrence is talking about the nail polish that you can't get enough of. <laughs> it smells so bad, but you can't get enough of it. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah, this movie's like a fucking car wreck. Like it's horrible, and it's I, I can't believe that people are subjected to this. But I'm I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch the whole thing. My eyes are peeled. <laughs> yeah, I can't just look away. I need to know if he's gonna fuck up those bullies. <laughs> slash serial killers <laughs> it's yeah you just you i found myself actually like looking for a uh, resolution i was like well is he gonna do it like <laughs> is he gonna beat the evil mayor like is this gonna you get into it it's weird and i shouldn't but you get into it it's funny i okay. had like several people come into my room and like tell me like what is this i'm like i don't have time to explain just leave yeah. me to my to my business here <laughs> It's called work. Do you know about that? It's called work. All right. 
98 episodes. Leave me be. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> um, let's talk a bit about the cast. Yes. Uh, yes. Mark Torgel plays Melvin Junko or Melvin Ferd, depending on your preference. I prefer Ferd because that's hilarious. He would uh, later play Evil Melvin in Citizen Toxie, the Toxic Avenger 4. And uh, everyone involved in these movies didn't do much. Uh, but is that really a surprise? <laughs> no, but what I will say, something that, much like Roger Corman, Troma also started the careers of lots of different people. You probably didn't catch it, but Marissa Tomei makes a cameo in The Toxic Avenger. Um, let's see, uh, Jennifer Aspinall, who did the special effects, she's like a fucking artist, and she still occasionally will do special effects. She's been in the business since then. Um, let's see, who else? So, like, they acquired movies that have had Samuel L. Jackson in them, Kevin Costner, Vincent D'Onofrio was in the first turn on, um, James Gunn wrote Tromeo and Juliet. And exactly. Uh, he also um, <laughs> made a mockumentary with his uh, wife and it's called Lolly Love. And it's all about how they're giving lollipops to homeless people to make them happy. And Troma picked it up and distributed it. Oh, and nice. then um, Trent Haga, who was in Terra Firmer, he wrote Toxic Avenger 4. Um, he went on to write um, Cheap Thrills. Uh, Classic. Yeah, that movie. Yeah, <laughs> that movie. But then when you but when you see that and then you figure out where he came from, you're like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. So I I get it. And that's what they do. Like Lloyd wants to find people and uh Joe Lynch, the the director Joe Lynch, um, he was also working for Troma at one point. So incredible. Lloyd definitely like will put you to work and he will reward you for it. And you know, he just he just keeps going just keeps turning shit out it is nice to to see a film company with that kind of loyalty it's it's not very rare it's definitely you know happens more with the little guys and trauma is definitely the little guy and i, I respect that big time i did know about uh lloyd kaufman's connection to james gunn uh doing my research in this and i did find that uh lloyd kaufman has a cameo in guardians of the galaxy yeah 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 <laughs> so cool yeah he was he also did. in Twitter. yeah it's yeah cool that they still have that relationship well, I mean, Lloyd gets paid for it and he can make like four more movies. So, you know, yeah. with whatever he makes. And he always has a penchant for playing a drunken bum. He was a drunk bum in Rocky. He was a drunk bum in Slither. <laughs> He's been a drunk bum in a lot of things. That's great. <laughs> I looked at his IMDb page and Lloyd Kaufman has acting gigs lined up for the next three years. Like he's got like 30, 40 films in development where it's mostly cameos. I love that. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, then we have Mitch Cohen, who plays Toxie, our deformed hero. He only played Toxie once in this film, but he did have a role in the fourth film, and he had a cameo in Clerks. So I liked Mitch Cohen. I thought he did a good job. I'm surprised he didn't come back to do more Toxic Avenger. Uh, Lloyd made a joke. I was watching I was watching uh, Toxic Avenger last night with commentary, and he made a joke about why uh, why Mark Torgel didn't. Uh, you didn't have him in Toxic Avenger Part 3. And he was like, yeah, I think he asked for like an extra 50 bucks or something. And, you know, I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> My God. But he also said that he regretted having not having him in there because the person that they did use as Melvin, he was like, the guy sucked. Like, I wish I had to just put Mark in there. So he knows, he knows. Like, uh, Mark Torgel was also in uh, the first turn on, I think, as well. And did a little script supervising uh, on on that, I think. So that was how he ended up getting through to work on Toxic Avenger as Melvin. That's cool. Everyone's kind of got a story. <laughs> yeah. Um, Andre Miranda plays Sarah, the blind girl who falls for Toxie. And this is the only film she ever did. This is her only acting credit. Well, I guess it didn't work out. Uh, 
Robert Pritchard plays Slug, one of the gym douches. Pritchard would also appear in the 1986 trauma production Class of Newcomb High. Any thoughts on that? Oh, I fucking love that movie. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's all about reading, writing, and radiation. Like, hell yeah. Um, yeah, no, there's that's a trilogy of movies. Uh, and then Lloyd recently, like 2017 or 2018, something like that, he did a uh, two volume. He, he shot so much, he made two movies out of it uh, called The Return to Newcomb High, Volume One. And then the return to yeah it's just it's ridiculous but yeah he uh he will he will go back to the well if he feels like there's something there um but i think toxic avenger and uh the newcomb high stuff i think are the only like franchises he made um he's got some other stuff um trauma's war was really awesome he did sergeant kabuki man nypd which is another crazy mashup cop movie that yeah you guys just got to watch some of this stuff. And <laughs> you ever just want to turn your brain off and just have some fun, watch a trauma movie. I'll keep that in mind. It's funny because most, like, most of the films we've done uh, up to now on Filmgasm uh, have been fairly serious, you know, really like intense horror films with like substantial budgets and like ridiculously talented actors. So it's, it's, and then we do, we do Oscar Sunday as well. So like to, to go like literally to the bottom here, is is kind of crazy to me and it's, i'm enjoying it i'm enjoying this this ride here yeah like uh like josh said it's uh change up the pace a bit yeah yeah oh totally and then like you were saying connor it just it shows you just how wide that spectrum is because horror is is a subjective thing like everybody's got something yeah. that really really scares them but then horror is also about like you know, confronting you with unpleasant images and yeah. scenes and things that are meant to challenge you and trauma movies definitely challenge you because they're not conventional by any means. They're not the norm, quote unquote, and they, they relish that. So I, I, I really wanted to like, cause this more than anything, like trauma movies definitely fit my personality and that was another reason why I wanted you guys to to watch it because you could definitely get a peek inside my brain and just like, okay, so this is really what's going on in this guy's head. This is why. <laughs> so, fuck. <laughs> uh, then we have uh, Gary Schneider plays Bozo, the other gym douche. He would also appear in Class of Newcomb High. Is that the Corey Feldman looking fucker? I think that's Slug. Bozo is the one who's always freaking out because he's going to rage. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I'm stressing, Julie. I'm stressing. Yeah. yeah. These two guys are the most like complex people I've ever seen. They're like they're gym douchebags, but they're also automotive serial killers who are dating women who are also automotive serial killers. Like, what the fuck is going on there? What is this health club? And I, I that was just such a crazy like blend of traits for a character. So that whole, uh, that whole piece of them like going out and committing homicide by car was pulled from reality. Lloyd read a story where somebody was actually doing that and he was like, oh, this, is, this, this would be great for the movie. So he just Holy got shit. it jammed in there. Yeah, yeah. And what you, um, what is kind of like the basis for a lot of trauma movies is like a whole us versus them type thing. and you know how you classically have bad guys you know trauma movies have bad guys <laughs> there everything is always cranked up to 11 so you're gonna have people who are vain and only care about them themselves and how good they look and how tight their bodies are and then they're like oh no but we really like to run over little old ladies and squash kids heads so yeah that actually explains the nazi chief of police <laughs> and the uh, taco thief rapists. <laughs> so you answered three questions there for me. Thank you. Yeah. Moving on. Then we have Pat Ryan, who plays the morbidly obese Mayor Peter Belgoody. Ryan was a short-lived character actor who also appeared in such films as Mannequin, Birdie, and you guessed it, Class of Newcomb High. 
He tragically died young at 44 years old in 1991 from a heart attack. And I'm not surprised. That guy was huge. Massive. I mean, God. I, like, he didn't even come across as a bad guy, in my opinion. Like, I don't know. There was something, like, I don't know, maybe it was his performance. But, like, he didn't scream, like, you know, evil politician. He just kind of screamed, like, bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think what I liked about him and his performances is, like, he's so – it's just like natural. Like he just looks like he could be that devious of a person. And if he's the mayor, obviously he's not going to look like he's, you know, totally despicable. By the way, with his whole little lineup of henchmen, like you said, the Nazi chief of police, but did you also get the Donald Trump looking motherfucker that was hanging out in the background with the bad comb over and the fucking spray tan face? Like just all these little things. You're just yeah. like, God damn it. <laughs> they're always trying to say something always they knew to say something. back in 84 yeah. they fucking knew yeah so <laughs> that, that actually is is something that i i think this movie is at first glance might be a movie that you can just think you're going to turn your brain off but really with everything going on if you really like watching movies you're going to be like ah shit i'm ocd and there's so much happening on the screen <laughs> and, and it's a lot to take in mm-hmm. so, that's for sure uh, <laughs> The Toxic Avenger has an IMDb score of 6.3, Rotten Tomatoes score of 70%. I was not expecting that. It grossed only about 800000 on a budget of 500000 but it's since become an underground cult hit, which is why we're talking about it today. And the, the scores honestly really surprised me on this, because I was expecting this to have like, you know, 2.1 and like a 13%, just because that's what, it's, you know, the critics typically attack horror for everything that this movie does is what critics hate about horror movies. <laughs> so I was expecting this to just be destroyed, but it's actually pretty well received. I, they got it this time. Yeah, that 70%, you know, you look at it as kind of like a passing sort of grade. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a C minus. <laughs> and uh, yeah, with that, let's get into the plot of this thing. <laughs> so <laughs> our, uh, our setting is Tromaville, which is simultaneously its own town, but also kind of like the sixth borough of New York City. It's kind of, it's not very clear. Uh, I was wondering what- Actually, actually it's New Jersey. Oh, so it's supposed yeah. to be Jersey. Okay, so, my mistake. Mm-hmm. I assumed with all the New York shots that this was supposed to be like part of New York City, but yeah. also its own town. It just, it confused me a little bit. Yeah, no, it's, it's Tromaville, New Jersey. Ah, Tromaville, New Jersey. That makes way more sense. Damn, yeah, I, that's had, why I had a whole bit. That's why waste capital of the world. <laughs> I bet, of course. Jer- I bet Jersey love that. <laughs> uh, so we meet Melvin Ferd. He's 98 pounds, weakling, weird nerd guy with a permanent, like, shit eating grin on his face. He's a janitor <laughs> at, a, at a health club. And yeah, I fucking hated this guy the second I laid eyes on him. I get it. I would have hurled him out a window too. <laughs> I mean, ugh. But weirdly, he's like the nicest guy in that health club. Everyone else is an 80s dick. And there's a very distinct difference between a current dick and an 80s dick. (laughs) An 80s dick is wearing spandex. (laughs) Yes. And And looks like Corey Feldman. Or short shorts. Yeah. Yeah. The montage opener opening of this of just like hot people in a gym, just like barely working out. Most of them are just dancing around. (laughs) (laughs) I was, I immediately was like, okay, I know what I'm in for. (laughs) I mean, good lord. Or did you? Or did you? <laughs> I had the same exact reaction I had when we did Swamp Thing because I had to watch this film on YouTube as well. And there are a t- there's a ton of nudity in this movie. And I couldn't believe that nobody has found that on YouTube yet. Like, Okay. I will, I will interject on here because this is a very tragic thing that happened. So oh. um, Lloyd had all of Troma's movies, like over like 400 movies or some shit. Um, on their own YouTube channel. They had them up there. They would stream them for free. Oh. You didn't have to pay a subscription to get them or whatever. And a lot of them were uncut. So you could watch them like, probably like you did. Um, but then just recently, YouTube killed their channel. Ah. Uh. And now Lloyd is hyping uh, their own streaming service, Troma Now. And you know, I, I, I might wind up giving my five bucks to them. But um, yeah, why not? Yeah, it's 
it's just this thing where, you know, they own those movies. And then YouTube saying, no, you can't do that. So Lloyd always has this, um, he has a very, very high disdain for the mainstream and the corporations. Good. And he also uh, calls them the devil worshiping mega conglomerates. And right at the, um, the start, actually years before they were having this conversation about net neutrality and what it would mean for larger companies to essentially have their own internet that they would stream things through. Lloyd was talking about that and he was championing like why the internet should be, you know, a democratic area where, you know, ideas and information can be exchanged freely. You know, it, it shouldn't be like a paywall. You shouldn't have to pay a toll to get on somebody else's internet because they have faster speeds and all this shit. And then lo and behold, look what happens. This stuff like starts trickling down from all of this shit. And that's another, when I brought up earlier, it's another way that trauma has been like at the, at the head of all of these issues. And yeah, so I know that the episodes are put up on YouTube, but YouTube suck it as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> I was just, when it comes to like the films we have, we, 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 we do, a lot of them are random. So we have to kind of figure out a way to get a hold of them. And occasionally we'll find a full cut on YouTube. It's rare, but it does happen. And Toxic Avenger was uploaded by somebody, and I guess YouTube hasn't caught them yet. But uh, yeah. They were they were on Prime for a while too, so I don't know if they were still there. Yeah, yeah that pissed us off so bad because it has been on Prime forever, and yeah, the second dude. we actually need it, it's gone. Yeah, like <laughs> up until a week ago, I was thinking, how can I get ahead of schedule for the podcast and watch some stuff? And I was like, oh, I'll watch Toxic Avenger, and I've seen it, so I got on Prime. Motherfucker, three ninety nine. I don't want to do that. So you know, we typically try not to rent anything. Yeah, and so yeah, uh, yeah, I, I'm with you, man. Sometimes. I have a hard time kind of being that consumer who does use stuff like YouTube and, and these kind of, you know, you can call them evil if you want uh, corporations because they're not, they're definitely not good. No. I, um, yeah, I, we don't like to pay money to get a hold of, of these films. For, a, we for an episode. Yeah. For one episode. A, we don't know if we're going to like the movie. B, you know, we're a hundred episodes in almost. We still don't have an expense account working on that. So. C, I'm poor. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we have all these streaming services and DVD, you know, Netflix through the mail. It's so we can, you know, save three, four bucks at a time. Yeah. But, oh, well, yeah. But yeah, but yeah, for our listeners, if you're trying to watch Toxic Avenger, which, you know, we all suggest you do just as a horror fan, because it's just uh, a thing that will broaden your palate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Check it on YouTube. It's, it's there right now. Yeah. Yeah. Act fast. Might not be there for very long. <laughs> no kidding. So, Melvin at this health club is a nuisance. He's really bad at mopping, which is amazing because that's really fucking easy. He keeps dunking the mop in the pool in the hot tub, pissing everyone off. Yeah. <laughs> that would be incredibly infuriating it's kind of if gross. I'm a hot 80s dick and the nerd keeps dipping his mop in my pool while I'm trying to score with these babes. Yeah, that would piss me off too. Yeah, come on, man. While well, I'm trying to score with babes, of course. And, and, uh, uh, the, 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 the mop, the mop at times is such a, obviously such a symbol before, before you even watch the movie, you see that you see the DVD case and the, yeah. the poster, you know, this is coming. So at first I'm just like, what is that mop really going to use <laughs> going to be used for? Oh man. Cleaning up the city. That's what, <laughs> that's what that mop is used for. <laughs> Not at first. At first just no. pissing off the yeah. hot 80s At first people. it's for fucking up at the health club. But I admittedly. These guys take it a bit far. Oh, man. Slug and Bozo and their girls, Julie and Wanda, all of whom are the worst human beings I think I've ever seen in a movie. I mean, good God, every horrible quality you can have as a person, they all had. And uh, especially Julie and Wanda, who are like, yeah, let's, you know, let's go kill some kids tonight. Huh? Come on, it's date night. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> they take pictures of it? Like, these guys, they're, they're serial killers, straight up. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, they all hate Melvin because he's getting in their way. And Bozo especially is like, you know, I'm stressing. We got to do something. <laughs> and they, uh, they have Julie kind of prank him. You know, they, Julie seduces him and he's like, what? You think I'm hot? Oh, my God. And really. 
you're not an, you're that stupid. But she's like, yeah, you're you're super hot. Why don't you go? Why don't you meet me in the pool wearing this tutu? <laughs> it's ridiculous. He falls for it. He goes down there, and they're all la- everybody's laughing at him in this tutu. Like the entire health club, and uh, he gets very you know sad and runs upstairs, jumps out the window. I think he jumped right or he slipped. So we'll back that up. The uh, the sheep that he was kissing. Yeah, um, the sheep. I forgot about the sheep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lloyd actually said that sheep was covered in fleas and all manner of gross stuff. <laughs> he didn't know it. They, they didn't know it when they brought it in. And then oh Mark Tortles, like, making out with it. Um, so, yeah, no, um, Melvin gets chased, which – to me, like, okay, so when you watch it, you're kind of like, why is this guy running up the stairs and he's going, oh, he jumped out the, why the fuck? Okay, whatever. You know, like, the, the, the suspension of disbelief is very high. You have to have, like, turned off your logic way early. Um, but when he, um, when he jumps out from there, they actually, um, the stuntman that jumped out the window, he wasn't wearing the tutu when he went to jump out the window. And... They were in the middle of it, like everything's going full speed. And then they didn't, they saw him not wearing it. They had to like stop him before he jumped out the window and he got pissed because he was, you know, he was geared up. He was ready to do it. And he had to stop to put on a tutu and fucking go swan dive out the window. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So the lead up to that, when you, when they're intercutting between um, Melvin getting the trick played on him and the truck drivers pulling him up, like that is, that is another like, classic bit of comedy where these two guys are like, yeah, you remember that blow we had? Well, you know, and then they're just like <laughs> burying their face in it and they come up after Melvin hits one of the containers and they're like, oh, like <laughs> those are these little moments of pure joy where you're just like, these guys know comedy and say what you want about this movie, but it always comes back to like pure enjoyment whether you're laughing at like how ridiculous these people are being or okay, these guys really just look like they face planted into a gigantic bag of cocaine. And, you know, of course they're not going to notice some poor bastard, which why would they be carrying toxic waste without a lid on it? Who knows? Who cares? Cocaine. Um, Yeah, exactly. I think the real question is who the fuck does cocaine like that? Who just sticks their head in the fucking bag and breathes? Scarface. Scarface did it. Yeah. 1983. 1983. One year before. Let's not forget. Let's not yeah. forget. Ryan De Palma showed it first. To- yeah. To- Tony Montana, one year prior to, to these guys. Yeah. That whole scene actually, and this is self serving and a shameless plug. It reminds me of a story I wrote in middle, in middle school. It was a, um, so I had this story about this, this superhero called Sodium Man. I know. <laughs> um, yes. He was walking down the street and he literally, like a toxic waste truck and a truck carrying a bunch of salt, like crashed at the intersection and he got blasted with both and became this like salt based superhero. And I thought like, you know, in the future, I read that story again, and I was like, this is fucking terrible. <laughs> and then I watched The Toxic Avenger, and I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I ripped off somebody. <laughs> and you didn't even know it. <laughs> oh, that, was something, that was something that, like, um, <clears throat> Lloyd was very conscious of, like, ripping off and stuff. That's why um, Toxie is known as the... Uh, a creature of superhuman size and strength. He couldn't say superhero because he was going to get his ass sued, Um, which ironically enough, one of the things that came out of the Toxic Avenger was a brief uh, run in Marvel. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. uh, Lloyd worked with Stan Lee. Think about that. That is amazing. Oh, my God. Incredible. (laughs) <laughs> yeah 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 they're yeah they're still out there somewhere i, I want to get them it was only like four issues but you know toxy and marvel like come on God. you gotta have that um, i wonder if toxy was invited to join the avengers but he's like no you're a corporation i'm not joining yeah, yeah fuck off <laughs> yeah fuck you guys i am i'm the only avenger i need to be 
Um, <laughs> do, I, do I get to play like, against YouTube? Yeah. Now I'm going to go bang a blind girl. <laughs> Damn right. I, oh, man, there's so many jokes. So many jokes. Um, but uh, they, had, they had trouble getting this into theaters. And um, the MPAA literally ripped this movie to shreds because they said that they, you couldn't show certain things. One of them in that scene, I don't know if you, if it was in your version that you saw, but right as Melvin's getting up, you hear somebody in, in off screen go, Melvin's on fire, Melvin's on fire. And then you see him like walking down the street on fire. Yeah, that was in our, that was the one we watched. Mm -hmm. The MPAA at the time would not allow that. They said you cannot have that in this movie, you know, and still get an R rating and be in a theater. So you have to cut it out. And yeah, that's one of the, that's that was the beginning of Lloyd's uh, love hate relationship with the uh, MPAA. Uh, and I don't blame him because the MPAA is stupid. Uh, yes. They don't yeah. have a unifying way of rating movies. And you find out a lot of times that there's you know favorites being played and palms getting greased and you know there's probably some rusty trombones going on but you just know that there is no integrity in there and they try and try and try all the time to fuck trauma and all these other you know independent companies and that's what they did just to get toxic adventure out there and you know what it didn't work because the uncut version exists and it's beautiful so who's laughing now <laughs> True, true. I've always fucking hated the MPAA. I don't, I think classifying film in that way, all it does is make, you know, trouble for people. That's not, that's completely unnecessary. I mean, I look at a film like Jaws, which has a PG rating, features like, you know, a, a lot of violence, a lot of gore, uh, language. Like, what did you have to do to get an R rating in 1975? Because that movie should have an R rating. So like, you know, what is it? It makes no sense. That was where PG-13 came from. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Jaws was Jaws was one of those films that it was like, you know, it's it's not hard enough to be an R, which I don't know how you're watching. You've got I think it's pretty good. It's a bit of the ocean. Quinn's um, death. Yeah. I mean, come on. Exactly. Um, but then... Well, it's frightening things I've ever seen. There's, there's that bridge, and that's where, you know, fucking Steven Spielberg, he makes a fucking summer blockbuster, and then he yeah. goes and creates his own rating, so... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, back to Toxic Avenger. So, uh, Bozo, Slug, Wanda, and Julie, uh, prior to turning Melvin into, an, into a Toxic Avenger, they went joyriding and uh, <laughs> explained that they have a point system. Like, they literally have, like, a, a cartoon in their car that labels, like, the point system. And it's, like... <laughs> You know, if you run over a kid, you get like 25 points. If he's in a wheelchair, you get double. Like, it's crazy shit. And they're, they're scoping the road for, like, potential victims. And there's this kid on a bicycle. And they're like, there he is. Double points if you get the bike, too. Like, holy shit. <laughs> and they just plow through this kid. <laughs> and then he's, like, crawling on the... On the... Twice. Yeah. Twice. It's so yeah. fucked up. <laughs> it's so he's... fucking funny. Because, like... <laughs> You, you you see him hit this kid and you're just like, oh my fucking God. Like, no, they didn't. And then they outdo themselves mere seconds later. Hey, he's still breathing. You're like, oh fuck. No, 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 no. And then, yeah, that scene was done with a fucking cantaloupe. And what did he say? But it wasn't, uh, it wasn't hamburger because that would have been too expensive. Um, what was it? <laughs> Just said it last night. All right, I can't remember, but one of the food groups, yeah. What, whatever the cheapest shit he could find, and he they uh, he fucking they loaded it up and <laughs> said they drew a smiley face on it, and you know staged it, and the rest is head crushing history. I've never seen a production where so many people like cared about it so much, but also didn't give a fuck. <laughs> It's an amazing union. So one of the things about it is like it's it's so it's so ingenious because it, because a lot of those those gags are like implied. You know, you you see just enough that you're just like, oh shit! Did you yeah. 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 And you're like, wait a minute, that's not really a head. But because it was done just right.
the shock of it all. The shock of it all is what they're going for. Yeah. True. And I was certainly shocked. And it's a great way to establish these guys as the worst human beings on the planet. Oh, yes. And then after that, they trick Melvin into flying out a window and landing in toxic waste. And he's like on fire around these people and nobody's helping him at all. They're all just like, whoa, this is weird. And he runs home, burned, you know, burned up and mutating. And he just gets in the bathtub and starts morphing into the toxic oh. Avenger. My favorite line in that sequence is when his mom's listening in and she hears him growl and she's like, oh, my little Melvin, he must be going through puberty. (laughs) (laughs) My little Melvin. Oh, my God. He's finally becoming a man. (laughs) Kind of. (laughs) He's becoming Uh, something. Oh, yeah. And uh, So now he's this mutated, deformed creature who has superhuman size and strength. And some scientist later on just assumes that he also has the power to be, like, compelled towards evil to fight it, which is awesome. I don't know. It's the traumaton. That's what happens. (laughs) Everything is, like, branding in this movie. It's, like, Tromaville, Traumaton. It's, like, (laughs) genius. genius. So a group of drug dealers led by this guy, Cigar Face, (laughs) who sounds a lot like Scarface, are harassing a police officer, this typical Irish cop, O'Clancy. I love it. And um, they start kicking his ass. Toxie comes out of nowhere and beats the shit out of these guys. One of them is a drag is in drag for some reason. And yeah, this this uh, this Irish guy is just like you know he's a hero. We can't hurt him. <laughs> Toxie. So just, if you go, yeah. I was going to say if you go back to that whole scene, it's straight up Three Stooges. Huh. Like if you look, there's there's a bald one, there's a curly haired one, and there's a dumb one. And just huh. like they're oh they're God. they're not all they're not all distinctly those, but it's that it's that aesthetic. And like, I mean, for fuck's sake, he buries cigar face face down in a barrel, and he fucking speed bags his balls. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, just all this goofy shit. Um, the uh, when he uh, when he pokes out the eyes. Oh yeah. Uh, that was, the, yeah. I mean, that yeah. was that was a lot of um was a lot of uh camera tricks. So like that one was done where it was shot in reverse because you know one of the things that Troma Productions pride themselves on is you know respecting people and their property, you know, not hurting anybody and making a good film. Um so you know he said that they did a lot of rehearsing for this movie prior to doing it. So by the time they got there, <laughs> this is great. He said that they, all the rehearsing that they did and all the rewrites they did, they just pretty much threw it all out and just went at it. <laughs> so it's just like <laughs> trauma has this spontaneity about it. And you're just like, so you did all that rehearsing and then you're just like, ah, fuck it. Just, we'll just do with it, <laughs> deal with it as we're there. But that scene was shot in reverse. So the eye, the fingers were in the eyes first and then pulled them out real quick so that when they flipped the, f- flipped the film over and printed it, it looked like they were going in. And that kind of trick was also done in Dawn of the Dead, where Tom Savini comes down with the uh, machete. That was another one where it's shot in reverse. So just to give that illusion of something far more sinister happening. Yeah. Yeah. And I I didn't realize that, but yeah, like the fingers in the eyes, that's that's straight out of Three Stooges. That's that's fantastic. I didn't make that connection. (laughs) And it's funny, you mentioned Troma made it a, like they didn't they respected people's like property like the sets they like the locations they shot in they didn't try to like you know cause any damage mm-hmm. yeah, That's, they, like, yeah they always try to like borrow and you know get whatever they can for as cheap as possible um a limousine that shows up later in the movie there's literally a dude just driving down the street that night they were shooting and they stopped them and were like hey can we use your limo for a second the guys like yeah and you know, what he thought would have been like 30 minutes turned into four hours, you know? So it's just like, but he got to, you know, he got to watch them, a movie being made. So it's like, that was his payment. So, uh. you know, by any means necessary. And not only that, you see that. And if you have knowledge of how movies are made, you're like, how the fuck did they get a limo? What the shit? Like, really? It's, it's funny you mentioned that trauma really like, you know, tried to be protective of people's, like, you know, their sets and everything. Because I just read a story about a, um, 
the studio that's that's uh, I don't remember what studio. I think it's Paramount that owns Mission Impossible Seven are trying to work with the uh, Welsh government to allow them to blow up a historic bridge for the movie. So like, yeah, I look at shit like that and I'm like, wow, <laughs> that is incredibly selfish and insincere. Oh my God. So yeah, I, Tom Cruise and Chris McQuarrie are like in tough negotiations with the Welsh government to be like, can we blow up this section of this historic like 400 year old bridge? It would look great for the shot. Who the fuck do they think they are? Oh, fuck that. Fuck makes this me, guy. Knowing that about trauma actually like really makes me respect them even more. Yeah. In terra firma, because it's all like a movie within a movie. Um, what's like a movie about a movie being made and it's a trauma movie. You see those signs up all the time. And when they made a movie called poultry geist, Night of the Chicken Dead, which is another fucking fantastic movie. Um, they uh, they were showing like the making of. I was watching it, and they had those signs up. No shit. So it's like it's ingrained into their process. So that's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, so he violently kills these criminals, leaves a mop on their faces as like a call sign, and uh, Cigar Face manages to escape, promising he's gonna get. He's going to get him. He yells out a gay slur. I don't know why everyone, like all the bad guys are throwing out gay slurs. It's the 80s. It's the 80s, yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's, it's, that's, it's, that's it's very normal. Time. Yeah, very, very normal to say uh, retarded as well during this time. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Melvin tries to go home, but his mom is terrified of this creature. I love Melvin's new voice. He's like, mother, it is me. Yeah. <laughs> this super dramatic, deep voice. Yeah, because he's a because he's a hero, and heroes yeah. always are well spoken, you know, beautifully. You fucking bass voice. <laughs> I love that. I love that bit where he goes up to the cop and he's like, "Hey, hey, 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 it's okay, it's okay. I'm not going to hurt you." And it's like, shut the fuck up. Like, of course, of course, he's gonna have a voice like that. I love it's not his voice isn't the slightest bit affected by the toxic waste. He's got this perfect enunciation, but he looks like Quasimodo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's hilarious. <laughs> so, obviously, this story gets out. He becomes known as the monster hero. They never actually call him the Toxic Avenger until the end narration. Because they didn't have the name for the movie until after. And it was originally titled Health Club Horror. But that's where these came from. These t-shirts still exist. You can get them from Troma Direct uh, for like 20, 25 bucks. Uh, this is the second one I've had. Probably my favorite one because it's yellow. And it's just out there. Yeah. Respect. Respect. <laughs> uh, so now Toxie with nowhere to go uh, builds a makeshift home in the junkyard. Just kind of lays there. You know, despondent. And uh, Elsewhere, a gang of three men are holding up a Mexican restaurant called the, I swear to God, the Mexican Place. <laughs> I love it. That I found out in the trivia. Glamorized the word. I found in the trivia, that's, that's a real restaurant. And that's really what it was called, the Mexican Place. I didn't know that. That's fucking even better. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Popeye's now. But <laughs> <laughs> at the time, it was a Mexican joint it was just called the Mexican Place. I love that so much. <laughs> it's a Popeyes now, but <laughs> oi, and Fucking sombreros and samurai swords. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck was that? A katana on the wall of a Mexican <laughs> restaurant? <laughs> We're big Pulp Fiction fans here. Yeah. I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> Jesus. So these guys are just like monsters. They shoot this blind woman's dog. Who the fuck does that? That was, in, I'm, you never see that in film. Like, you know, killing a dog is a big old, you know, strike towards people liking your movie. <laughs> Pointing guns at children is a big no-no. True, true. The, but I would, I the would guy that, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, the guy that played Leroy, the, the guy that's got half his face painted that's walking around with a shotgun, he quit after that day. That messed him up so much that he quit. Um, 
the guy that plays Frank uh, was an actual like IRS uh, agent. And <laughs> that that's just that's just an interesting aside. But he was actually uh, he only had one arm. And Lloyd, Lloyd was like, yeah, so we really wanted to find somebody with just one arm so we could, you know, rip it off real easy and not have to worry about, you know, faking it or whatever. But the special effects team went through the, went through the trouble of crafting a stump. So like you didn't even get to them to, to use his actual stump, but like the made up one is what you see. And it's just like, I didn't know about it. And then when I saw it, I was like, ah, fuck it. You know I guess we're not going to see his real stump, <laughs> but he, but he does that. Like he, that was something he learned from um, Preston Sturgis. So when Lloyd was back in Yale, that's right. Trauma was founded, like started in Yale of all places. He and Michael Hurst met each other at Yale. Yeah. That's cool. Lloyd was, Lloyd uh, studied, uh, majored in Chinese studies. He wanted to uh, go into social work and, uh, in in his own words, teach people with hooks for hands how to paint. <laughs> um, he also he also spent some time in Chad helping people out there, um, and you know he came back, and he had had like the the movie bug planted in there because one of his roommates ran the Yale Film Society, and he just got all these movies shoved in his face and he became in his own words a celluloid hugging nancy boy and he's a he's a very very like he knows his film history uh the preston sturgis thing was um preston sturgis liked to put people uh he called them mugs you know weird looking people interesting looking people and that's a it's an ingredient in all of Troma's movies. Like the people in there are interesting, if nothing else. That's and true. How, how the hell did that guy get in the movie? But it's because he looks like that that he's in a movie. Yeah. So, yeah, it's all in the name of keeping your audience interested, and that's why Lloyd is a goddamn genius. <laughs> yeah, it's cool that they got started at Yale. Reminds me of uh, you know, like National Lampoon got started at Harvard. You know, comedy. You know, I think. Comedy comes from intelligence. Yes. That's cool. So this Mexican joint, the Mexican place. <laughs> I'm not going to get over that. That's the funniest. Um, these three people are just, you know, attacking it. They're, they're going to hold it up. But also the leader is going to rape the blind girl because he's really trying to get a luxury spot in hell. And um, Melvin shows up and starts kicking their asses. And... <laughs> Oh my God. He makes like, he turns that guy into an ice cream sundae. That was so vicious. Milkshake. Turned him into a milkshake. Yeah. Just fucking. Oh God. Deep fried that other guy's hands. <laughs> yep. Ripped off Frank's arm, beat him with it and shoved him in a pizza oven. Um, the, uh, just like the gags in that whole, like everything that's played in there. Uh, as I was watching it last night in, listening to Lloyd talk about it, he, uh, he brought up of all people and his birthday was just yesterday, Alfred fucking Hitchcock. Ah. Um, and said that, you know, Hitchcock always liked to use mundane settings to, you know, for the settings of like all of his terrible movies and all these terrible things that are happening. And he was like, that got me thinking about like all these, you know, seemingly innocent things. And, you know, who have you ever then or since seen somebody be turned into a human milkshake? I'll wait. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, I would say Daniel Plainview uh, goes there and there will be blood. He's just so drunk that he doesn't know where he is in that scene. Yeah. <laughs> you know, milkshake is not a term that comes up a lot in film, especially when you're literally just, you know, shoving the device down a guy's throat. Yes. <laughs> Mixing them up. Ugh. <laughs> and the blind girl is understandably freaked. So Melvin takes a moment. It's like, hey, 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 hey. You all right? <laughs> you all right? You need that fucking voice. Can I help you home? <laughs> and he's, she's just like, yeah. What, what happened? He's like, it's okay. Everything's fine. Everyone else in the place took off. 
and they start dating. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Because, you know, it's like mask. The only person who can love this face is a blind woman. <laughs> well, that's also a, a, uh, a parallel from Frankenstein, which mm-hmm. was part of what um, Lloyd got inspiration from. He wanted, you know, his, his hero to be this monster. And, you know, he loved Frankenstein. So, you know, took that little piece where Franken, where the monster met the blind man and they became friends, you know, Sarah, or, yeah, Sarah helps Toxie. And, you know, they become a, a great match and they, their love stands the test of time. They're together through all the Toxic Avenger movies. Oh, that's nice. Do they ever have kids? Yeah, they do. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to you got to you got to work your way through them to get to the fourth one to find out what becomes how his, of them. How does his nuclear sperm and not just obliterate her? That's the same way, you know, like that whole argument that they have in uh, Chasing Amy about superman <laughs> yeah 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 true but he is like literally walking toxic waste we see him pissing toxic waste in this movie <laughs> hey fun fact fun fact about that scene lloyd uh was joking about this and he was like he said that he was the only person that could uh shoot such a powerful stream so that's that was him <laughs> that was him hanging dong and pissing in that movie Jesus Christ. Awesome. I love that we have a shot of our hero just like on the side of the wall, his hand up on the wall, just taking a piss in broad daylight. That, that moment you relate to him. How many times have you, you know, had a day full of crime fighting and you just got to go. But then people like drive up to him like, hey, monster. <laughs> and he's just pissing. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so uh, Toxie continues to fight crime. Just taking down drug dealers and pimps. It's, yeah, this, I think that's when the guy comes up and is like, hey, you want to buy this 12-year-old? And he's like, ah! Only only $12. A, there's no way he's making a profit. B, that's really fucked up. <laughs> but you know what would probably make Toxic Avenger a little bit more heroic in this town is if, yeah, he was fight, he's fighting crime, but he is like just viciously murdering these people. I mean... It's not very heroic, but, you know, I'll, it, is, it is fun. <laughs> hey, it sends a message. That's true. Mm-hmm. And he goes after the four assholes who, you know, have been doing the, the uh, hit and runs. First, he goes after Wanda in the health club because that's all – the only place these fuckers go is the health club. <laughs> and burn, like, burns her ass on the rocks. And then Julie, he takes a pair of scissors to her and uh, – Regrettably, we don't get to see that happen. I was I was looking forward to that. Did you catch the uh, the sign as uh, Toxy was walking uh, to to the sauna? He like pauses and looks up, and the sign is like, "If you have fucking blisters or whatever," you know, basically describing Toxy is like, "You can't go into the sauna." I remember and that. And he sign. like pauses. <laughs> he pauses and looks up at it, <laughs> just like, "What the fuck." It was too funny. It was too funny. But that's, you know, once again, Lloyd, you know, making full use of everything around him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like when he takes out, Bo- what was it, Slug and Bozo, and he just gets in their car and he just rips Slug out of the fucking car. He's dead in the road and then just takes Bozo for a ride. And they just, he almost drives him into a group of children. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. And just kills his ass. And then climbs out of the car and goes and fucks up a dry cleaner. <laughs> like he takes out that dwarf woman inexplicably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was and that was a good that was a good little bit of misdirection because you're like, wait, yeah, maybe yeah. he really is a monster. He just straight up folded that old lady up, and like, and and even that has its own little cringy moment of like mild racism where he's sitting there in the dryer and he's like, no, ticky, no, washy. <laughs> And you're just like, fuck. <laughs> I crack up because, you know, for me, it's it's all funny or it's not funny. Definitely can understand, like, you know, nobody would put that in a movie now. And <clears throat> even even Lloyd himself has said about, like, some of the movies that they acquired, um, Blood Sucking Freaks is one of them. Oh. And that movie is woof. It is so full of over-the-top shit. 
but even he said it, he was like, I don't think that we would ever acquire that movie now. If that movie came across my desk, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick it up. <laughs> but, you know, they, they wanted to build up a library and, you know, they're trying to push buttons and that movie pushes a lot of buttons for sure. I rem- yeah, I remember your review on that one. <laughs> I haven't decided if I'm ever going to watch it yet. You you better have a couple of beers in you. That's all I'm going to say. Just okay. Well, Toxie inexplicably takes out this little old lady at the uh, dry cleaner, and, and understandably, the city is upset until it's revealed privately that this old lady was like running a a drug operation for like decades, and Toxie just picked up on that. And and slavery. She had a white yeah, slavery. She had a white ring. slavery ring. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? And the, the mayor's like, keep this quiet. We can use this as, as an excuse to get the monster. And of course, Chief of you know, Chief of Police Goebbels is like, Yaho, Mr. Mayor, and walks away. I don't know why the fuck, but it made me laugh every time. It was so it was oh, so yeah, fucked yeah. up. <laughs> well, that that immediately makes me think of Doctor Strangelove. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Ugh. Um, Hawk Tung. <laughs> I can walk. <laughs> oh my god! So the people love Toxie, but the mayor hates him because the mayor's super corrupt, and eventually Toxie's going to pick up on that. And uh, he's been leading. He's like the kingpin of crime. Mm-hmm. Even looks like him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was low. <laughs> he uh, he wants. Melvin or you know, Toxy to be taken. He wants him to be taken care of, so he calls the governor to get the national guard involved. But the governor wants him alive, so he can be experimented on. But the mayor does not listen to that one, and uh, they eventually find to- Toxy. He is um, he and Sarah run away. They don't really run away very far. They run away like to the you know woods outside of town, the camp, and um, <laughs> she's wearing a bikini for some reason. They, the, the army surrounds them. The people are like, no, he saved our lives. Irish cops like, you can't do it. And they get in, they like make a barrier between the army and Toxie. And eventually the army's like, we can't do this. He's a good guy. And the mayor's like, fuck that, shoot him. And he takes out a gun. <laughs> and the, Toxie walks right up to the mayor and just rips his guts out. <laughs> and nobody lifts a fucking finger. <laughs> to be fair, like, the army didn't know the mayor was corrupt. Typically, if you see a monster rip open the mayor of this town, that's the signal to open fire. <laughs> but everyone just kind of goes with it. They're like, well, he was probably a bad guy. <laughs> Ugh. And the movie ends with a, you know, assurance that where there is crime, the Toxic Avenger will follow and he will fuck up that crime. <laughs> yeah. Decent flick. Gotta say, <laughs> I I would watch this again. Um, so here are some film gasm facts. We talked about a few of these. One, uh, future Oscar winner Marissa Tomei does have a cameo as an extra coming out of the shower in the health club. Uh, number two, Larry Sultan, Frank, had only one arm. And he, you can tell it's a prosthetic because he never actually uses that arm or moves it until Toxie rips it off. <laughs> yep. Number three, during pre-production, Vincent D'Onofrio was set to play the role of Bozo. Prior to filming, D'Onofrio asked for a slight raise and was instead fired from the movie and replaced immediately. <laughs> Apparently, Troma does not give raises. Nope. Surprised they even pay these people. <laughs> My God. Number four, the Mexican restaurant was actually called the Mexican place. <laughs> Number five, in a deleted scene... It is revealed that Toxie did not kill Wanda or Julie. Sl- he slammed Wanda onto the hot rocks, injuring her, and then he didn't stab Julie to death with scissors. He cut off her hair. <laughs> the two girls are shown having a fight at the police station in a deleted scene with Wanda wearing a giant gauze bandage on her ass, and Julie is completely bald. <laughs> and I kind of wish we'd gotten to see that. <laughs> there were three sequels made, as well as a short lived cartoon series. First up, 1989's The Toxic Avenger Part 2, which sees Toxie tricked into going to Tokyo to search for his father, leaving Tromaville to be taken over by an evil corporation. 
Then there was 1989's The Toxic Avenger Part 3, The Last Temptation of Toxie, which sees Toxie going to work for a major corporation after having taken care of all the crime in Tromaville, and now he kind of becomes part of the problem. I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I'll ever watch these. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, 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 you totally should. Don't, don't okay. deny yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. In 1991, the cartoon series Toxic Crusaders aired for only 13 episodes on YTV in Canada. It featured a group of mutants led by Toxie as they fight pollution and evildoers in Trumbaville. Have you seen this? I assume you've seen this. Oh, yeah, of course. I actually <laughs> saw the Toxic Crusaders before I watched any trauma movies, obviously. 1991 i was like eight years old so yeah no i definitely and it it is a great cartoon not even kidding you um better better in like the uh the environmental things that they talk about than captain planet which is like Bullshit. hammy and over <laughs> captain planet <laughs> hippie love stuff. um toxic crusaders really really ridiculous as you would expect, something from trauma, and it's it's just a lot of fun. The the right. fact that they that like you you've seen the Toxic Avenger, and then you see it get brought full circle to a Saturday morning kids cartoon. <laughs> Unbelievable! Like you you would not have thought that that cartoon came from that movie. There there's no there's no way that should happen, but it did, and it was just a testament to you know, what trauma had found with that movie and what they had done. You know, like I told you, they, you know, they had Marvel. Stanley and uh, Lloyd Kaufman knew each other. They had actually uh, worked together on like a script at one point. Um, and yeah, then the to Toxic Avenger was a fucking comic book. So yeah, it, it, it never should have happened. Absolutely not, you know action figures all this stuff like it, it never should have happened but it did and yeah you know trauma lloyd kaufman thing you know they still uh they still uh still very proud of that very very proud of that that reminds me of a question a question i wanted to ask you so lloyd kaufman went out of his way to use the term superhero so the word superhero is actually trademarked mm -hmm. by who marvel or dc well i don't i don't know if it was um trademarked like but i think because of like superman and that kind of stuff like i think it's one of those things like it cause i don't know that it's exactly trademarked i don't know that for so it was fact. like a I better think. safe than sorry yeah kind of thing. yeah 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 and and lloyd was you know they don't have money for lawyers and shit so why would they <laughs> you know True. why would they even mess around um but yeah, like they, they definitely played it safe because, you know, they didn't want to get, you know, they didn't want this movie to get caught up in anything. Um, I, and, and, and I'm not 100% that the word superhero is trademarked. I wouldn't be surprised if it was, um, you know, and Gene Simmons holds that trademark or whatever, you know, <laughs> <laughs> fucking guy he to trademark OJ so he could have people pay him every time they said it. Shut up. <laughs> And finally, in 2000, Lloyd Kaufman helmed a fourth film, Citizen Toxie, The Toxic Avenger 4. In it, Toxie faces off against his evil doppelganger, the noxious offender. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And there's also uh, the, uh, the diaper mafia, and there's also a battle. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... Um, what they're doing when I brought up Terra Firma before, what they're doing is they're showing um, they're making another Toxic Avenger movie mm -hmm. where Toxie uh, is having the babies <laughs> and his <laughs> babies are fighting each other in his it's just it's so fucking bananas. <laughs> it's, perfect. it's perfect for a trauma movie. It's perfect for a trauma movie. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I would say like as far as like the progression of things, like you guys have seen Toxic Avenger. You should watch Sergeant Kabuki Man. Um, maybe watch Surf Nazis Must Die, Class of Nukem High, and then watch Terra Firmer because yeah. you just get like a little bit of the flavor and you get a little bit of the history. And then Terra Firmer makes fun of all of that shit. 
<laughs> so like Lloyd Kaufman is poking fun at himself. Perfect. The, um, he plays a blind director <laughs> named Larry Benjamin in Terra Firmer. And he's just, he's making fun of himself the entire time. Um, so Lloyd is not afraid to go after himself. But even then, like you're still like seeing all this great, like this is great stuff that he's come up with and the fact that when they made that movie trauma had existed for more than 25 years at that point we're now creeping up on 50 years of trauma 50 fucking years that's insane to me it makes no sense i even made the remark in my um in my article about trauma it's like when hollywood is you know consolidated way back in the 30s and 40s and then they got pulled apart they're consolidating again, you know, like all these little major, all these little independent uh, studios have come and gone. Trauma is still there, like the fucking cockroaches of cinema. You can't get rid of them. And I hope they never go away. But only time will tell. Fantastic. <laughs> so I give Toxic Avenger a seven. It's not perfect. Lord knows it's an acquired taste. But I found it oddly charming and I will probably watch it again. Yeah, seven. Yeah, I, uh, for myself, I, I think you know I connect with it the, the, the least on a from a fan's perspective. I have a lot of work to do uh, as far as uh, horror goes. Uh, I, I've known that for some time, and part of part of joining this podcast was challenging myself in that regard. But um, I will say, is there is there you know I know trauma. This is their this is their their bag. But for me as a fan, which one do you think I would like the most? Like out of all the Toxic Avenger movies, oh, like those ones, them? no, like those ones you mentioned, you know, Newcom High, those things. Like, do you think there's one that I would connect with a little bit more? Um, I think if you can appreciate the um, like the fact that they're working like the whole movie within a movie angle. Yeah, I love that. I love films that are that do that. film references and things like that. Um, you you really have to strap in because it mm -hmm. like all the insane stuff you saw in toxic adventure they do that and then some in terra yeah. firmer it's just it's been cranked up to 11 and if you can go in there knowing that you're probably going to be grossed out shocked yeah and you're going to find yourself laughing at things you're like wait why am i laughing at this right yeah now? attack on the senses then an absolute assault on your senses yes um from from the beginning um it is you know it's a movie within a movie so you know you you've probably already seen a few movies that work that way so that whole you know that whole frame of it is is easy to to digest the only thing that makes it different and a lot more fun in my opinion is you plug trauma into that yeah yeah um, there's just there's just a lot of outrageous things going on um Part of why I say you need to work up to it is because they do reference like other trauma movies and characters and things like that. Um, there are also like gags that evolve through that movie. Um, and it's, and it's things with like, so they'll make a joke about continuity and how trauma yeah. movies don't really, don't really, you know, believe in continuity. And while they're doing that, they're visually playing off of that. And it's <laughs> That's just, awesome. it's, if if you can appreciate how movies are constructed and you know the things that make a movie good, um, Terra Firmer has all of that, and it just constantly pokes fun at at you know Tr Lloyd's poking fun at himself the entire time. So yeah, I would say that's that's probably Trauma like hitting their their height like yeah. peaking out. Um, but I would still argue that the things that they've come out with after that have been just as good yeah um yeah i mean probably one of my favorite movies of theirs is um trauma's war and poultry guys night of the chicken dead yeah it is a zombie movie musical that is skewering the fast food industry that's great <laughs> that's perfect damn okay good answer thank you <laughs> yeah man yeah and i know that you gave this a 10 on your uh review last year damn right which also won me a signed toxic avenger poster from lloyd kaufman himself so i must have been doing something right if the man who birthed toxie 
loved my review. Beautiful. So, I mean, and obviously I shamelessly plugged Filmgasm in, you know, where they could find it and all that stuff. And in the lead up to this recording, I was blasting out, you know, trauma and us doing this. And Hell yeah. so hopefully, it, you know, hopefully that leaks out a little bit and we can get a little bit, uh, you know, draw that audience in because I think, you know, trauma, trauma people love movies, Filmgasm. We love movies. Yeah. So, why not why not bring some more people like that into the fold and for sure yeah let our worlds collide yes yeah bring that's it together it's, that's, that's what it's all about that's fantastic next week we're going back to woodsboro california to dig into one of the best horror sequels of all time 1997 scream 2 yeah i can't wait for that man yeah. it's gonna be a blast because we got to do that one us three together last time yeah mm-hmm. yeah no that's gonna be a lot of fun um i think it's one of the only ones that I like of the sequels yeah mm-hmm. for 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 varying reasons um i i like some of the things from screen three and screen four i just i i could <laughs> yeah i watched on, yeah. it only because i wanted i wanted to get through it yeah. and then, yeah yeah scream two is good though scream two is good. <laughs> yeah so we'll be doing scream two next week uh we haven't done a lot of sequels on the show so when we get to kind of revisit old episodes it's always fun yeah. Uh, until then, don't run over kids with your car. Don't hurl nerds into barrels of toxic waste. If you do, you may inadvertently create a dangerous vigilante who rips bad guys a new one. We'll see you next Wednesday. Mm-hmm.